Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting, and our topic today is Direct Materials Budget. So we are in a series of videos about budgets, and they are in our video description. And today uh, we will talk about direct materials. And when we talk about direct materials, we need the units to be produced. So we need the production uh, budget. And if you want to know about production budget, it is one of our videos and they are in our video description. So budget, budget means Excel. So here it is our Excel file. It's also in our video descriptions because all of our Excel files, they are free. And so let's consider here direct material number one, a budget for our product X from Skype Incorporation. And here we need to start with the units to be produced because we need to know how many units we will be producing to purchase our material. So we need the production numbers, the number of units to produce. Okay. So let's go here, January units to produce. And we copy and paste it until December. And we go to our total is the sum of our units. How many, how many units of direct materials, for instance, how many pounds of direct material number one do we need to produce one product X? For instance, seven. So what did it need for production? It will be 33 times seven. So we need 231,000 pounds of these direct materials. So here, copy and paste until December. And each pound costs 4.5. We will be working with that later. Desire ending inventory. Usually the, poly, the company policy is based on percentage of next month sales. Uh, so here, let's consider that it is not next month sales, sorry, next month production, because we are talking about production. And let's fix it for the following one too. Okay, let's consider here 20%. And let's link it December. Here, desire in the inventory, next month production times 20%. 29. And here we will have it. Whoa, December is too much because December is wrong. December, it is the total. So we need to take it from uh, January. And January, we have the 08 instead of N8. However, it's nothing because we don't have the units to be produced in January. And we don't have it because we need a lot of math. So if we don't have it, should we leave blank? No, we need to take the most approximate number that we have. That is the sales because sales we have January because we need uh, January sales for our production and so on. So let's take January 32 here. And then the quantity will be 225 and then 45 here in December. Uh, and total needed, we are based on temporary, on sorry, periodic inventory system and not perpetual inventory system because it's much easier to work with. So the total needed are available for sale if we are talking about financial accounting for merchandise companies. What did it need plus ending inventory? And we copy and paste. Oh, we don't have the total. Here, the total, just like production. Here, our ending inventory at the end of, the, of our year will be the December ending inventory. So we won't sum it. So here we combine these two numbers here. Okay, let's combine it in yellow. 
Let's beginning inventory. Let's consider we are a new company. So we have no beginning, beginning inventories. If we are an old company, we only need to take this uh, number from the previous December. Beginning inventory is always the previous ending inventory. So 29 and we copy and paste until December. And here the total, say, the total beginning inventory is January beginning inventory. So here, here, there. And we need 250, we have nothing, so we need to produce 250. However, here in January, we need 180, we have 29, so we only need to produce 151. And here we copy and paste. How do we know if this number here is right? We can also sum from January to December. The numbers must match. Okay, and then times, cost per pound. So until here, everything here, we are working with units. However, direct materials, we purchase it. So how much each uh, pound costs for 50? So the cost of direct materials purchase will be 250 times for 50. So we copy and paste here. And what if we have more than one direct materials? We create one sheet for each direct materials. For instance, here, direct materials one, direct materials number two, and we do exactly the same math. The same math. So here we only change our number, quantity needed, the price, the policy, instead of for direct materials two, instead of 20%, we are working with 25 and so on. So if we have 10 direct materials, we only create 10 sheets. Okay, so no hard stuff here, only more, more work. Hey guys, so that's it. Thank you so much. Please subscribe our channel, like our video, and if you have questions, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Have a very nice day.